Before the outbreak of conflict, Sudan was already facing a humanitarian crisis due to extreme weather shocks, social and po uh, political unrest, and rising food prices that continue to drive poverty, hunger, and displacement. Okay, conflict between the SAF and the RSF erupted on April 15th, 2023. While fighting has been chiefly con concentrated in the country's capital, uh, the conflict has impacted other regions of the country. Mass killings and displacement have led to reports of ethnic cleansing. At least 15,500 people have been unalived, with over 10 million people displaced within the country, making it the largest displacement crisis globally, the largest. And no one's talking about this. That's crazy. More than 12 million people have fled their homes, taking refuge inside and outside the country, with children representing about half of the people displaced. Children representing about half of the people displaced. That's about 5 million children. 5 million children. That's, that's insane. This is uh, war without any rules, without any moral thing. In the current situation, we are seeing a progressive catastrophic situation unfolding. Things will get worse. Things are going upside down. It's kind of endless suffering. If the trajectory continues like that, we will find ourselves in a very difficult situation. We are headed into the outskirts of Khartoum, Sudan, which is one of the largest cities in Africa. And right now the city is torn between two warring forces in one of the most devastating wars in the world. Since April 2023, Damn. As many as 150,000 Sudanese have been killed. And some 10 million have been forced from their homes, according to the UN. Now, with no million. end to the fighting in sight, Sudan is teetering on the edge of a famine that could kill hundreds of thousands. And is facing a potential genocide that international aid agencies say may already be happening. Since the war erupted, Sudan has been closed to most international journalists until now. Wall Street Journal journalists, accompanied by Sudanese army officials, traveled to the front lines of the fight. Salam alaikum. This here is one of the very front lines. And uh, this side is safe. This uh, side is uh, dangerous. You can see just the heavy destruction all around here. Bullet holes lie in almost every wall that we see. This is the toll of a year plus of... As, as someone who's from a third world country, I understand this. It is, this looks familiar, you know? Reminds me of home. War. Controlling this area would have given RSF controlling the western side of uh, our forces sector. So you can imagine how difficult and how tough a battlefield has been. The fighting began last year when two generals took their forces to war. General Abdel Fattah al Burhan commander of the Sudanese Armed Forces, and General Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, known as Hamedti, commander of the Rapid Support Forces Militia, or RSF. Once allies, they came together in 2019 after massive protests to oust the 30-year despot Omar al-Bashir in a push for democracy. Then two years later, teamed up once again to overthrow the civilian-led transitional government of Sudan. By 2023, 
their tense struggle for shared power finally resulted in all-out war. Now, as the Sudanese army has taken control of more territory around Khartoum, they are unearthing countless horrors. So this is the National Broadcasting and Radio Center for Sudan. This was a central point for the RSF to control. And now it's completely destroyed. They tortured them here. So the soldiers here are telling us that this room uh, was used as a prison and torture center. We're seeing sorts of tools used to restrain people. There's bedding, even women's bras on the ground. It's clear that this is a place where some terrible things have happened. Savage. Mohammed Malik Ibrahim was one of the prisoners at the broadcast center. The RSF accused him of being a Sudanese soldier. Malik says he was eventually released because of family connections. But many others weren't as lucky. They used this place like a gallows for hanging. This is sad. No, oh, what did they do? Why well, stop sharing? This is sad, y'all. People and killing them here. On the top here is some makeshift crude pipe tied together. And below they dug this hole so that they could knock out the chair to hang people here. The Sudanese armed forces said when they discovered it, they also discovered a mass grave nearby. This used to be a soccer pitch. And There's so many spots like this people. all around the city that have been transformed by the intense violence that has happened here. The RSF has denied attacking civilians around Khartoum. The U.S. has said both sides in the conflict are guilty of war crimes. The RSF is accused of ethnic cleansing, and aid groups say the military has blocked humanitarian aid from reaching areas controlled by the RSF. Around Khartoum, the city is still deeply divided. While the Sudanese military has spent months pushing into Omdurman, one of the three cities that makes up Greater Khartoum, Central Khartoum is still tightly held by RSF forces. Now the majority of the fighting comes in the form of random artillery, mortar attacks, and kamikaze drones. And civilians are caught in the crossfire. This is an emergency area where we accept injured patients. This is one of the victims of the last shelling on Friday. The injury to his pelvis, this is dangerous. Sharp nail. He's a huge wound here. He lost two of his friends of his age, died immediately. I will see another patient. Her name is Iman. She's a victim of the Friday bombing. She was at home. The bombing happened, had brain injury. And she has, her brother died. 14 years old. How often do you see injuries like this? Very often. Every day, every time, day and night. For us, today, it's a normal day. So right now we're at the Al Nau Hospital. The main hospital in the city has been destroyed. So this tiny center is now being overwhelmed with cases. The wards here are packed with people. The doctors are saying that there's just not that much that they can do. They're totally overwhelmed. Bombing is uh, coming every two, three days. Sometimes every day. All civilians? All civilians. 
This hospital is filled with people suffering from shrapnel wounds, from artillery strikes that have happened. The shelling is just totally random around the city. Small kid, his name is Moyet, three years old. He has now bilateral fracture femur and bilateral fracture of the lower limb. Sharp nail inside the abdomen. His older brother died the last Friday, about a week. I don't know if I can continue watching this. Here. Right. Sorry, their, their other child died a week before? Uh, the same, uh, the same accident. Her older child, seven years old, died. Just the same situation. Sitting in, at their home, shelling and pumping. As we left the hospital, the family had just identified a young man who had died. This is a war from the militia it's without any rules, without any morality. They are just killing people for nothing. You saw victims. They are not soldiers, they are not armed, they are kids. This war has led to a level of food insecurity not seen in decades. According to a group of UN and major relief agencies, around a quarter of a million children could soon be on the verge of death. At the Port Sudan Pediatric Hospital, the risk is clear. This is the last line of defense before children die. We have about 730,000 severely minority children. And we are quite concerned that uh, the situation is really getting worse and worse as we go. What is needed now and what we are able to provide is not really matching. Um, over 10 million people displaced in Sudan, the highest in the whole world currently. Bro, why is it more people talking about this? Why? I don't see this in the mainstream media at all. This, that's crazy. In this world, we have said many times, never again. Now, as you can see, the situation is quite concerning. As the fighting rages around the country, thousands continue to flee their homes. So this is a transit point. This is the first point that people are outside of the RSF militia control and inside the Sudanese Armed Forces control. The people we're talking to have spent all of their money and many, many hours crossing the front lines to be able to get away from the fighting. Brothers Zain and Farah are from a village under RSF control. We have decided to leave our own house because we are no longer safe. My brother is just suffering a lot and I have no means of help anymore. Farah was recently arrested when RSF soldiers say they found a picture of a Sudanese soldier on his phone. It's difficult to describe how horrible the situation is. They arrest people, they torture people. We are heading to another place where I can meet my uncle in taking my brother to the hospital. Things are going upside down. Here at night, we These are the RS, RSF soldiers, rapid support forces.
anyways for ourselves and for the rest of the family all right this was this was a depressing video not gonna lie this was this was a depressing video this got me really sad anyways i hope it gets better uh for the people of sudan um man nobody no one deserves to go through uh this and i hope the people uh grow conscience to know that fighting is not the way a civil war at that huh killing your own people craziness <laughs>